Hi, you've reached Alice. Please leave a message after the beep. Beep. Hey, Mom. It's, um, it's me. It's Billy. I, uh, I got the email from Harvard. I'm a finalist for the Lattimore Scholarship. Yeah, I got, I got an interview with the recruiter tomorrow. And, um, I'll see you tonight, okay? Did I just hear something about a Harvard scholarship? Uh, hi, Angelica. Y yeah, yeah, I'm, um, I'm being considered for the Lattimore Scholarship. <laughs> that is so adorable. What is? You can't seriously think you're getting that. They only give it to one student in this region, and it's going to be me. I, I didn't even know you'd applied. <laughs> Duh. I'm the best this town has to offer. Clearly. One's a trailer park boy, always a trailer park boy. Meanwhile, I'm student council president, and I have a 3.95 GPA. <laughs> Face it, Billy. You're just not on my level. That... That doesn't matter. What matters is that I'm a good person, you know, unlike some of the people applying for this. I gotta go. too inbred to even walk straight. <laughs> What's for dinner tonight, Billy? Barbecued squirrel? Deep fried <laughs> raccoon for dessert? <laughs> Come on, Julie. There's gotta be some shifts I can pick up this week. I'll take anything. Yeah, I'll even do the dinner rush all by myself for the overtime. What do you mean I've maxed out my hours? What does that mean? Is that even possible? Look, I, Julie, if... I wouldn't be asking if I was desperate, okay? You know that. I need this. Really? Okay, hold on a sec. Let me just write this down. Tuesday and Friday. <sighs> you are a lifesaver. I love you. Thank you so much. Bye. <sighs> There's my future Harvard graduate. <laughs> Okay, so I'm jumping the gun. But I'm just so proud of you! <laughs> Mom. Mom! Mom, why do we have to live in this stupid trailer park? I mean, God damn it! You don't get it. They will never choose someone like me. I would be an embarrassment to Harvard. Where is this coming from? Look. Yeah, there are more people out there that are well off and that will judge us. But Billy, look at me. Hey. You cannot let them affect you or else they win. Okay? All that's important is that you believe in yourself. Do you understand me? Yeah. Well... I don't. 
And even if I did, I can't just conjure up a scholarship just by believing. Billy, when that recruiter meets you tomorrow, he's gonna see it himself. How determined and confident you are. You are a shoe in honey. I'm not going. <laughs> You're not going. Okay. I'm not going tomorrow, Mom. What's the point? People like us will always be losers. But Billy, look. I said I'm not going. I gotta go. Shift to the soup kitchen. Swim at the big fish at Harvard? He can't even afford his own food. Let's see what that Harvard recruiter thinks when he sees this. Just when I thought you'd be smart enough to save yourself the embarrassment of coming here. Hey, trailer park boy. I'm talking to you. Oh, by the way, how bad was the lineup this morning? For breakfast at the soup kitchen, I mean. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, save it, Billy. I know all about your little secret. And you seriously thought you could convince Harvard to let you in? Better stay where you belong, little Billy. After all, Harvard doesn't have a soup kitchen. <laughs> Billy, right? Yeah, yes, yes sir, it's, it's a pleasure to meet you. Martin Young, I'm a recruiter and a former Harvard man myself. You know, Billy, uh, your resume <laughs> precedes you, you know. You're tackling this huge course load in your senior year, right? And you're adding all these hours and hours of volunteer work, plus you still hold a 4.0 GPA. That's impressive, Billy. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is unacceptable. Harvard is the most prestigious school in the world because it has standards. Certain people belong there and certain people do not. Look at me, I belong there. And it's not just that and wealth and connections, it's everything. And what is that trailer trash from doing his whole life? Hunting for vermin in the forest. Well, uh, Angelica, you're incorrect. Wow. <laughs> is this yours? <laughs> you know, this photo, uh, Takes me back to my childhood. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah, yeah. 
I was a uh, scholarship kid myself. Couldn't have uh, afforded Harvard anyways. So. Uh, me and my mom, we would go to the soup kitchen. Uh, a few times a week we would be there. If it wasn't for those volunteers that showed up, uh, would have starved. And I wouldn't be here where I am today. No, oh, Billy, uh, you should have included this photo in the application, huh? It made us realize that you're the right person for the scholarship. Oh, sorry. Well, uh, come on. Yeah. This isn't over. What place is this? The receptionist situation is a total disaster. I don't think that guy was... Never mind. Don't tell me. You're here to interview for the developer or coordinator job at Blue Fog Mobile, are you? As a matter of fact, I am. Is, is that a problem? Nothing. I just would have worn something a little bit different. That's all. I mean, I don't know what they taught you at that school that you went to, but at Stanford Business School, they taught us that you need style and talent to succeed. But not all of us can be Ivy Leaguers. By the way, out of curiosity, what coding languages do you know? Well, if you must know, I speak English, French, and a bit of Portuguese. And I can type extremely quickly on my cell phone. Uh, I meant computer programming uh, languages, you know, like Python, um, Java. Whatever. Nobody uses those anymore. Trust me, honey, it's all about social media presence. And I have a ton of experience in managing a highly curated Instagram portfolio. Here you go. What the hell is this? Lukewarm water? I wanted it with ice, obviously. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not. Okay, with ice. Yeah, with ice. Mr. Graham? Tara Mayfair, we spoke on the phone. Excuse me? You're Chris Graham, CEO of Blue Frog Mobile. Yes, that is right. <laughs> Tara. Thank you so much for coming in today to discuss the uh, position with me. The pleasure's all mine. <laughs> and uh, Robert, would you be so kind as offering our other applicant over there the same hospitality? Absolutely. This way, please. Please, sit. Mr. Graham, 
I must say, that office assistant of yours was extremely rude to me. All I did was politely ask for some water. How utterly disappointing. I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm sorry you had to deal with that, Miss Mayfair. I assure you I will speak to Robert as soon as possible and make sure this never happens again. I'm ever so glad to hear that. Especially if we're going to be working together, I'm going to need an assistant of my own. Of course, Miss Mayfair. Of course. Uh, now, please, tell me about yourself. Oh, uh, I forgot my pencil and pen. One second. Oh, okay. Sorry. Hello, Pa? I'm sorry, there's simply no way I can cover the restaurant today. I'm about to start a job interview. Pa, it's... But you don't understand, I don't want to take over the family business. And this job might be my only chance to, to do something greater, to work in software development. I'm sorry, I gotta go, I gotta go. Okay, okay, bye. Uh, now, let's move back to the position, the position you're actually here to interview for. As, uh, as I'm sure you're aware, Blue Frog Mobile has a flagship app in development, mm -hmm. and we're uh, forecasting a Q3 beta release next year. So, my question to you, in terms of technical skills, I'm going to assume you're familiar with uh, Python, uh, C Sharp, JavaScript, all the big heavy hitters. I don't see how that's relevant, to be honest. <laughs> Based on your resume, I'm already really impressed. Um, I guess my only question for you is, like, what do you feel you would bring to the table as Blue Frog Mobile's app development coordinator? Well, if I may, Mr. Graham. It's um, Chris. Just, just, you can just call me Chris. Oh, Chris. Um, okay. I've prepared this document which outlines several of my key ideas. Overall, I believe Blue Frog can be one of the foremost apps in its field if you implement these. I mean, this is amazing. You really came up with all this just for the interview? Well, of course, yeah. I mean, I don't want to seem over-eager or anything, but it would be a dream job for me. <laughs> that is a beautiful sculpture. You know, my father owns a collection of these by the same artist. I'm sure he wouldn't mind parting ways with... Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there. <laughs> You're not trying to bribe me into giving you this position, are you? No, no, of course not. I'm just saying, I have connections. Sorry to interrupt in here, but uh, I think we found our new coordinator. Oh, fantastic. I guess that means you can go now, Tara. But Mr. Graham. Please, you can stop calling me that. My real name is Robert Durand. I'm a business mentor and friend of Chris's. But then who's Chris? At your service, madam. <laughs> no way. The useless office assistant? You're Chris Graham, CEO of Blue Frog Mobile. Mm -hmm. You have to be joking. I'm afraid not, Tara. You see, I saw how you treated Chris back there in the lobby. What the hell is this? Lukewarm water? I wanted it with ice, obviously. And I know Chris is a very kind and decent human being, and he would never call you out for bad behavior. I, on the other hand, don't mind one bit. And I thought maybe this might be a good learning opportunity for you. Plus, I had half an hour to kill, and I thought I might have some fun. The, the interview, the position. Uh, frankly, I, I'd never want to work with anyone who treats people the way you do. Uh, Robert here helped me realize that uh, shouldn't waste time with people like that. So, Chris, who's the lucky candidate? Hi. Hi. Diego. Yeah, very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Him? 
The guy who didn't even dress in a civilized outfit? Hey, I like this shirt. Just wait until my father hears about this. I bet he will purchase this entire company just so he can watch as it burns to the ground. Okay. Well, um, we will wait to hear from your daddy then. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so, uh, just to make sure, who's Chris Graham? <laughs> <laughs> but Daddy! Sweetheart, I can't just buy off every company that doesn't hire you. You'll have to keep applying. But this is so stupid anyways, Daddy. I don't understand why you're being so difficult. Look, sooner or later, you'll have to find your own success in life. And I've decided it's going to be sooner. What do you mean? What do you mean? I'm cutting you off, Tara. It's for the best. Hey, Cynthia! <laughs> Ew! God. Oh. <laughs> Wait. 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 Somebody clearly didn't take the hint from yesterday. I can film this. Hey, give that back! What, you want it? <laughs> you want it? What? Aw, look at you! Oh, poor little baby. You want it? Fine. No! I'll share it with you. <laughs> Just a photo. Just take another one. Stop being such a baby. I can't. What? Mommy left because she couldn't stand her ugly troll of a daughter? Aw, boo-hoo. No wonder you don't shower. Your parents clearly don't care about you. I feel sick to my stomach having filmed this. Poor girl. It's been like a week since anybody has seen her. Bet you Andrea had something to do with it. Yeah, probably. She always hated Cynthia. I wouldn't be surprised if they found her body in a ditch somewhere. I had nothing to do with it, okay? Andrea Wells to the principal's office. Andrea Wells, principal's office. Looks like they found her. Don't worry, I'm sure you can still take college courses in prison. So you think it's funny to bully underprivileged kids? It was just a photo. It was more than that, Andrea. You don't know what this girl's been through or what her life is like. I just thought... You, you thought what? That some people would find it funny? Those people aren't your friends! This girl could have been, but... <laughs> you chose to make her life hell. And for what? For some people online to like you? Well, congratulations. Because you've painted a really clear picture for the whole world. You're a bully. No more, no less. Dad, I don't want to hear it, Andrea! I expected more from you. Anyways, you can forget about shopping anytime soon. Because I'm done. Dad, someone's at the door. Cynthia? I'm sorry, I think I have the wrong address. Sorry to bother you. Wait. 
Look, I, I'm really sorry about the garbage bin. And I feel awful about the photo. You didn't deserve that. Does your dad have any more photos? No. My parents both died when I was young, so I don't have many photos left. Can you give me a second? I'll be right back. Hold on, please. I know it's not much, but I kept it for you. Maybe you could tape it back together? I'm really sorry. What's the phone for? I don't use it anymore, but I always keep it close by. It's like your photo, but for me. What do you mean? You have one saved message. To play your messages, please press one. Hey, Superstar, it's Mom. I'm calling because I want you to hear the good news. The doctor said the third surgery was a success. I'll be home by next week. I'm so excited to see you and your father soon. Love you. It's the last time we ever heard from her. She never came home. Um, I listened to it every night. Look, I'm really sorry about your photo. I know I don't deserve your forgiveness, but... I forgive you. Thank you for sharing. So I hope this means that you two can be friends. I'd like that. Me too. See, I need you to get along. You just need a little push. Wait, you called her here? Yes, I called the group home to talk to her. And it turns out that you two aren't that different after all. Group home? Yeah. Yeah, I live with a bunch of people. But they're kind of like my family now, so we share all our belongings. Clothes, too? Dad, um, since it's still technically my birthday, I was wondering if we could go to the mall. Not for me. Um, I was wondering if I could use my birthday allowance for Cynthia. If you'll let me. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I mean, if it's okay with Cynthia. I'm okay with it. All right, girls, let's get a move on before the mall closes. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Come up. What are you smiling at, idiot? Oh, uh, nothing. A plus student, but dresses like a dump diver. Typical. Did you steal your jacket from a home no. store by any chance? It's vintage. From a thrift store. Well, you should bring it back because it stinks. And, um, what's in that big bag of yours, huh? Nothing. Why are you always picking on me? Because everyone knows what a pathetic loser you are. <laughs> Except they can't say it to your face. Now give me that bag! Ugh. Please, just, just not my phone. My parents can't afford another one. Oops. Did I almost just walk? on your vintage phone. Miss Anderson, um, I was just helping Anna find her things. Isn't that right, Anna? No need to cover for your classmate. I saw everything. Miss Anderson, you have this all wrong. You've been warned before. Anna, go back to class and wait for me there. Lydia. I'm afraid to say, but you're suspended until further notice. Please pack your things. Suspended? You can't just do that. Wait until my father hears about this. I'll call him myself, Lydia. <sighs> Dad, you'll never guess what Miss Anderson just did to me. <sighs> Dad, um, I'd rather not go in there. I'm really scared of her. Do you think I could just 
use the washroom and come back here to meet you when you're done? Of course, sweetie. I'll take care of this. No one treats my daughter like this. Mrs. Anderson, is it? My name is Dan Dvorak. Maybe you can tell me why my daughter Lydia has been suspended? How do you do, sir? Considering I've been called in in the middle of my day to deal with all of this nonsense, I would say I've had better days. I understand. I appreciate you taking the time. Spare me the sympathy. Lydia's told me all about this girl Hannah and her vicious lies. You wouldn't be speaking about Anna by any chance, would you? One of our star students? Hannah, Anna, it's the same thing to me. I couldn't care less. Lydia is the victim here, and you need to end her suspension. I'm sorry. I simply can't do that. So you're okay with punishing the wrong student? I don't know what Lydia has told you, but I'm afraid she has lied to you. She is the real bully in the story. You're gonna believe a bully before you believe my kid? I believe my own eyes. I've seen it firsthand. This may come as a shock to you, but she's actually the one who's been intimidating Anna for the past three months. Lydia would never do such a thing. I know, it's a tough pill to swallow. Today I caught her in the act. She was about to crush Anna's phone. Crush her phone? Well, where do you come up with all of these stories? Mark my words, I will take it to the principal, then to the school board. I'll take it to the regional director if I have to. You might want to reach out to the Minister of Education while you're at it. Look, you aren't the first parent who turns a blind eye to the truth, Mr. Dvorak. I am going to have you fired if it's the last thing I do. In case you need directions, the principal's office is down the hallway, first door on your left. <sighs> See where she gets it from. Who's here? The little rat. That you were suspended. Wrong. My dad believes everything I tell him, and right now it's not looking too good for you. I'm not afraid of you anymore. Oh no? Well, you should be. I'm just like my dad. Nobody double crosses me. Ugh. Just leave me alone. You know, I never wanted to say it, but you think I'm the loser? Nobody actually likes you, Lydia. Well, what are you gonna do? Call your parents? Oh yeah, I forgot. Your shitty phone is broken. And I'm pretty sure you won't be able to afford a new one. Okay, that is enough. Dad? Lydia, why have you been lying to me? Lying? No, I would never do that. You've always taught me to stick up for myself. That's what I was doing. <laughs> Lydia, hand me your phone. For what? I said hand it over right now. She, she was the one bullying me. It's enough with the lies, Lydia. Hand me your phone or I will humiliate you in front of Anna. You uh, wouldn't dare. Hmm. Watch me. No one double crosses me, remember? Good. Do you have something to say to her? Anna, I want to apologize for my daughter. And I can promise you whether or not it comes out of my wallet or her allowance, you will get a new phone by tomorrow afternoon. I can promise you that. Why not just take away my handbags, my room, my clothes while you're at it? Your handbag. I was joking. Mr. Dvorak, you don't have to do that. Yes. Yes, Anna, I do. I need to make this right. And I need for Lydia to understand exactly the consequences of her actions. Now I need to take care of the consequences of my actions. Let's go, young lady. We're going home. Mr. Dvorak, I've got something for you. I took the time to create a report on the situation. <sighs> Lydia.
Listen, to think Lydia could behave like this, I couldn't accept it. I took it way too personally. I guess I've got a little bit of soul searching to do for myself. One thing is for sure, I won't be needing that. I contacted a family therapist and we're gonna to get to the root of this problem. We're scheduled to see her next week. That's a good call, Mr. Dvorak. If you're willing to do the work, you've got a good chance at fixing it. Your daughter's lucky. It's not all parents who can take accountability like that. Thank you for the kind words. And thank you for your honesty, Mrs. Anderson. You're most certainly welcome. Wow. Who would have thought? You? Aren't you married? Not anymore, no. Hi. Hi. Wow. <laughs> it is so good to see you again. How are you doing? Good. This is really nice. Yeah. You, you weren't here last week. No, I just found out about it today. Really? <laughs> kind of crazy. Huh? Friends told me about it. Wow, that's really brave of you. So you were here last week? Yeah, but boy, I'm back this week because it wasn't really, you know. It's an energy between two people, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to take a walk? Okay. Yeah. Come, let's go. Ugh. Can you believe the new girl? <laughs> That's so embarrassing. I'd never be caught dead wearing that. She's hilarious. She's sketching even after class is done. <laughs> Please, like she'll ever make it in this industry. Hey, what are you doing? Give it back. Trying to stop this crime against fashion. <laughs> it might be too late. <laughs> what? Are we being mean? I'm done. Do I look like I'm done talking? Leave me alone. Or else what? This is what designer fashion looks like. Not this garbage. What is that? Please don't! Not right now. I don't want to talk. What's going on? Nothing. Just forget about it. Hey, 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 hey. What happened here? Uh, you wouldn't even understand. This one's beautiful. Don't say that. Nobody's ever going to wear it. It's just a stupid dream. That does not sound like you. Well, you don't have to sugarcoat it. I'm not made for this. That's okay. Who told you that? Was it those girls at school? Yeah. 
Do you remember when you were 10 years old at that fashion show you were in? Do you remember how embarrassed you were at wearing your own creations? Yeah, but... But nothing. You stood there proudly and you showed everyone how talented you are, how amazing you are, how fearless you are. And how did that work out for you? I won the first place. When adversity comes knocking at your door, you have to be ready to fight back, to be as steady as stone. Whenever you get knocked out, you fall down, it's hard to get back up. And sometimes, you know, the first thoughts, they're not the best ones. Every person you're gonna meet on your path, whether they're good or bad people, they're there to teach you something. And sometimes they will try to project their insecurities, their fears onto you. I've been doing some digging of my own and I found this really interesting internship that I think you should apply for. I don't know. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Well, I'm just gonna send it to you. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. Out of adversity always comes opportunity. I guess you're right. I gotta give it to you. I'm shocked you would even send in your designs. Do you really think you have a chance at this internship? <laughs> Between us, I'm surprised they even invited you. <laughs> God, I can't wait for them to tell you that you're not made for the world of fashion. Ladies, nice to finally meet you face to face. My name is Lana and I'm the CEO of Global Fashion. Now, as you are both aware, we're seeking a junior designer and you are both finalists for that position. So I sent you each other's designs yesterday and I'm curious to know who you think brought it to the table. Well ma'am, I believe mine did. My designs are to the point, cost effective and inclusive for our global audience. You seem awfully quiet. Do you have anything to say in response to that? Well, I believe my talent is unique. I thought of all nationalities and all the little girls who dream of being different. I put my heart, passion, and integrity into this project. But most importantly, I learned that when people go low, I go high. That's why I believe I'm the right candidate for this position. To be fully transparent with the both of you, we weren't prepared for this as you both exceeded our expectations. So we've decided that you are both worthy of working for us for very different reasons. Both of us? Oh my God, that's incredible. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. I do have one extra thing to show you, Layla. Show her? Yes, her. Layla's unique design impressed us so much that we want to start on a prototype right away, which we think will be incredibly successful. Oh my god. Congratulations, Layla. 
We think that we can sell millions of these mermaid tails and we want you to oversee the project to ensure that your idea comes to fruition. We see this as an excellent opportunity for you. Thank you so much. I will not disappoint.